Here's an interesting question. Let's consider a galvanic cell as follows. You've got on the galvanic cell, on the let's say on the beaker on the left, you've got a bar of zinc. And on the right, you've also got a bar of zinc, right? But the difference between these two galvanic cells, obviously they have to be attached electrically. You have to have a salt bridge between them. But the difference between these is the concentration of zinc ions, right? So here, the concentration of our zinc ions, uh, zinc 2 plus ions, is equal to 1 molar. But here, it's equal to uh, 10 to the minus 2 molar. So it's much more dilute. The question is, will you, if you hooked a voltmeter up to this, would you see a voltage? And if so, what would it be? Okay, so good question, right? So let's think about it. In this scenario, something has to be oxidized and something has to be reduced. So let's go ahead and write the half cell reactions. What's being oxidized, what's being reduced here? So we have zinc metal, which is going to be oxidized. It's gonna lose electrons to become a zinc ion. So zinc, let's say it's becoming zinc two plus by giving up two electrons. Meanwhile, you've got zinc two plus ions picking up two electrons to form zinc metal. That is the oxidation and reduction reaction for this, right? So you could write out the voltages for these, right? V naught for this one. The standard reduction potential is given in this table. It's negative 0 0.763. So negative 0 0.763. And this one, since we've just written the exact same reaction backwards, is going to be positive 0 0.763. So the overall uh, cell potential, delta V naught, is equal to 0, right? So the question, though, is it says, at room temperature, what voltage, if any, is produced? Remember, delta V naught is not the voltage that you read here. This guy right here is not equal to delta V naught. It's delta V, right? So what's our expression for delta V? Let's write that out. Delta V is equal to delta V naught minus RT over NF natural log of the concentration of the oxidized species over the reduced species. Now, it's not clear to us which one's oxidized and which one's reduced, right? We've got these two zinc species. So what should we do? We should assume one gets oxidized, right? Assume that one gets oxidized and one gets reduced. And if the voltage is backwards, then we know that we had it wrong. So let's go ahead and write it out. Let's assume that the one that's going to get oxidized is the one that has less metal present in solution. So it's more likely to want to become oxidized. So let's do 10 to the minus 2. So we're going to do 10 to the minus 2 over 1. All right. So let's plug this in. This equals 0 minus 8.314. This is happening at room temperature. By the way, the units of that are joules per mole Kelvin multiplied by 298 Kelvin. This whole thing gets divided by the number of electrons. That's 2 right, times Faraday's constant, which is 96,500 coulombs per mole. This will all be multiplied by the natural log of 10 to the minus 2. Let's plug those into a calculator and see what we get. Okay, what I get is a positive 0 0.059 volts equals 0 0.059 volts. Because it's positive, we know that this is spontaneous. So yes, in fact, what's going to happen is that this species right here, this one's going to corrode. We would see corrosion on there, and we would see plating on this side. This would get oxidized. This would get reduced. Because it got a positive voltage, that means that as we assumed it, it happens. What's interesting about this is, yeah, this is proof that you can make batteries when both materials on the ends are the same, you just have different concentrations. What it isn't going to give us is a very large voltage. So 59 millivolts is not a very useful battery.